Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare the Elgato Wave 3 with the HyperX Quadcast S. Now, I've done a video separately to compare the Wave 3 with the original Quadcast that I'll link to in the description, and I've obviously unboxed and reviewed both these mics separately with a bit more detail on each of them. But in this video, I want to talk to you about the differences between them, the highlights and lowlights, what I like and don't like about them, and more. And I'm going to obviously also compare the microphones at the end to a mic test to show you the difference side by side so you can hear that. I am using one of the microphones now, so see if you can guess which one that is before we get to the end. And I'm going to do the entire voiceover using that one as well. I'm going to talk to you about the differences between these two USB microphones. There are some software and hardware differences and they are very striking and very different in their setup and design and yet both capable microphones able to deliver fantastic sound and obviously designed for content creators, streamers and the like. I'm using it for a voiceover but both of these can be used for streaming purposes and the Elgato Wave 3 shines in that area because of its software and I'll talk more about that later on but it has some of the best software when it comes to routing audio and creating a great sound for your audience. The Quadcast S however also has some fantastic features that I'm going to cover as we go through through this video as I show you the various highlights and points of interest. Obviously one of those is the RGB light, but there are others as well. Now you can see them side by side, they look quite a bit different. The Quadcast S stands a bit taller and larger, it's a bit more imposing and a bit more eye-catching perhaps, whereas the Wave 3 is kind of understated in its small frame and stealthy looks. There's no RGB lighting on it, although when you do plug it in, you do get a little light around the volume wheel and the various lights on the front of it, but otherwise it's very, very understated. Both of them have a capacitive mute functionality, which I'll talk a bit more about later on, and they also obviously both come with their own stands. Now, the Wave 3 is the one I'm going to start with. Let's talk about the various things about it, and you can see it mounted on its stand here. I'm of the opinion that the Wave 3 felt a bit flimsy when I first got out of the box and perhaps doesn't look as premium as the Quadcast S. However, it is still a sturdy thing. The stand is nice and solid and a good weight to it. And it is a very nice microphone that packs in a number of interesting features. It has a cardioid pickup pattern, so it's designed specifically just to talk into the front of it. And you then have a button at the bottom that you can adjust various different settings on so it pushes in and then you can switch between mic headset monitoring and also the mix modes as well so you can then adjust those individually and change the volumes of those on the fly and that allows you to change the capture levels but also what you're hearing through a 3.5 mil connection on it as well there's a capacitive mute which is basically a very touch sensitive mute button on top rather than a standard mute which means a quiet stealthy muting it also has USB-C connectivity and a 3.5 mil jack at the rear you plug your headset in there and then you get all the sound through from the microphone not only the mic monitor but also other sound that you'll be mixing into it and a bit more about that later on that essentially allows you to hear everything directly through the microphone. This has a 48 kilohertz 24-bit capture audio so technically on paper it has better sample rate capture quality than the Quadcast S but I'll leave more on the specs in the description so you can compare them on paper in there and this one I'm going to focus on the features and the sounds so the difference between them and as you'll see later on the sound is very comparable and they're very interesting now one of the things that I did notice when I first got this out of the box originally was that it was quite wobbly on the desk so if you have a really wobbly desk you might find that some of the wobble goes through into the mic as you can see obviously there's no shock mount included and one of the things you will have noted as well as there's no filter as standard you can see there's a separate one which I'll show you in a second which is an additional purchase. You do, however, have a flexibility to maneuver it around. So you can see you can tilt it up and down and turn it so you can adjust it depending on where it's sitting. So if it's on your desk, you can obviously point it up towards your mouth and adjust it nicely. Also, that base swivels off and spins away out of reach so you can then take it off and mount it on a boom arm and I'll show you the process for that in a second and there's an included adapter for doing so as well and I definitely recommend with both these microphones that you do get them onto a boom arm because it makes the quality a lot better. Now the 
Wave 3 doesn't have a pop filter as standard, which means that it will co pick up some of the p p pops and plosives from your mouth, and so an additional purchase is required of this pop filter, which just clips onto the microphone. Unfortunately, you do have to pay extra for this, considering that it is included as standard with the Quadcast, and that's one of the things that makes the Quadcast S stand out from the Wave 3, is the hardware that comes with it, so it has a lot more features in terms of hardware, whereas the Wave 3 is more software focused, and you'll see what I mean as I go through this. But you can see the pop filter here, which is an additional purchase, it just clips on on the underside, so you can see it just hooks on there and clips into place and then is held there. And I'll show you what difference that makes later. But basically that obviously stops some of the pops going through and reduces that problem on the microphone, which is obviously a bonus. But it is a shame, unfortunately, you do have to pay extra for this. You can also get a shock mount as an additional extra purchase, and that's worth bearing in mind as well. Because that shock mount will help with attaching it to a boom arm and making sure it cuts out noise there. Now in the box you also get an adapter, this tiny little adapter here that you can see that you can screw into where the stand connected to the microphone itself. You spin that on and then that gives you an adaption which will work with most boom arms. So in this example I'm using the Rode PSA 1 Plus. Obviously it will also work with Elgato's mic arms which I've done a video on separately that I'll link to in the description and you can just spin that into place with relative ease. I did note this is a little bit fiddly on some of the boom arms I've tested. On the Blue Compass for example it was very tight fit and it was actually difficult to get back off again. I think I complained about this in the original Wave 3 video as well. But otherwise, the setup is very clean. This is a very stealthy looking mic, even when it's mounted on a boom arm. And you can see the finished result here. But as I said, very important to get close to your mouth. Now, comparing the two side by side again, back on their stands, you can see the difference between them is notable. Obviously, now I put the pop filter on. But as I said, the Quadcast S already has a pop filter integrated as standard. That's actually built into the microphone and you can see some of that in a close-up in a second. The other thing is it also has a shock mount as well so it has two of the features that you have to pay extra for on the Wave 3 built directly into it as standard and you get that included with the price. Obviously you also have RGB on the Quadcast S and that RGB is adjustable within HyperX's Ingenuity software so you can actually customize the RGB and close up look here and you'll see the pop filter that's integrated into it. So it's designed to reduce the problems that you'd have with extra noise from pops from your voice. So nice features there as standard, set up straight away, looks a bit nicer and also functional in other ways too. Very intelligently thought out. For example, the gain wheel on the bottom of the microphone, you can see you can roll this. It's a very soft touch gain wheel that doesn't have any extra sound in it. So there's no buttons to press, simply just rolling this in the direction you need to to adjust the gain and it's very quiet. On top it also has capacitive mute, so very gentle touch there and that mutes, there's no button press again, so you don't have a thunk every time you try and mute it. Also, you notice that when it's muted, the RGB lighting goes off, so you have a visual cue that your mic's muted, which is obviously really obvious because it's very bright as standard. So that's fantastic because that it makes it a lot easier. If you're streaming and you want to mute and make sure no one's hearing you, obviously it's great to be able to see at a glance and a really obvious glance that it is the case. That RGB lighting obviously also stands out on camera, makes it stand out to the audience and what you're using and also just looks a bit nice. The other thing that I really like about it is the shock mounts. So just like the original Quadcast, the Quadcast S has a very sort of sturdy, stable and nice looking shock mount system integrated into it. So you can see that holding it in place there. That means that the bumps and the thumps don't go through from your desk into the mic as easily. Obviously also it is connected to the microphone itself. So when you take it off the stand, as I'll show you in a second, it also comes with it and goes onto the boom arm as well. So that means that it is basically integrated into the entire thing. You will also notice at the rear that you have an adjustment for multiple different polar patterns. You have various different settings here including stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bi-directional. So where the Wave 3 only captures from the front, this microphone actually captures from multiple different angles. So you have the option to use it as a podcast microphone, a stereo where people are sitting around it and you can talk to it from different directions. Obviously, this is beneficial. You can have it on your desk, and I did do a test to demonstrate the difference between this 
in the review if you're interested the difference between having it on your desk and having it on a mic arm obviously it's going to pick up a bit more in terms of keyboard noise both mics will so it's definitely preferable to get it away from the keyboard if you can but it's obvious that the quadcast looks a lot nicer when it is in any of the positions in my opinion anyway this is a personal thing obviously get it up onto a boom arm and you can see it here on the blue compass and you can make it sound a lot nicer i've done a video separately on how to make it sound nice and also how to stabilize the blue compass and i'll link to those videos in the description for you to check out but the process for installing it is really straightforward the stand comes off so there's a clip and a screw that basically holds it in place there are some bits that ping off it's worth noting there are a couple of rings there be careful not to lose those or the brackets because if you ever want to put it back on the stand you'll need those but it does come with an adapter in the box that you can see here again don't lose that either and you'll need to connect that up to the shock mount once you've taken it off the stand so using those rings put that back in place and then screw the screw back in to hold the adapter in place that adapter then works the same way as the wave 3 adapter and it allows you to use different threaded boom arm so it will work with most boom or mic arms without a fuss and it will connect up nice and easily again as i said earlier on you do have the shock mount attached to this system now so it's still attached to the microphone which means that it comes with it and therefore you have shock mount resistance even when it's mounted on a boom arm so if you have a lower quality boom arm that might let some noise through it then obviously this will help counter that problem once you've got it on a boom arm you can also get it a lot closer to your mouth which means you can then drop the gain right down as i said earlier this mic has cardioid pickup pattern which is what i'm using for the voiceover for this video yes i've been using the quadcast s the whole time and you talk into the front of it here for that but you can set the different polar patterns and pick up from different directions if you wish now I'm going to show you the difference between the mics and here I am with the quadcast this is how I've had it the whole time so you can see I'm talking into the front of it and one of the things that you will have noticed is that I actually did pick up some plosives and the reason why is I probably had it a little bit close which is a perfect demonstration of how you have to sort of set this up and think about how close it is from your mouth because you don't want to counter features like a built-in pop filter by getting so close that it picks up the plosive sounds. I've also done a video separately on the best settings for this microphone that I'll link to in the description, what to do, how to tweak the sound. An important point of note is I'm using a wireless headset here, so I'm not actually plugged into the 3.5mm jack for mic monitoring. If I was, then I would have noted those plosives which is an important point. So learn from my mistakes. Use a 3.5 mil connection from your headset into the microphone and then you can mic monitor and get your sound through that way and you can tell when there are problems. Also, it will allow you to tweak the sound a bit more, adjusting things like the gain. But as you can hear, a very good sound to it. And one of the things I want to demonstrate is how you can mute it without making a sound. So you can see just how nice looking that is and how good it sounds now i will note i haven't said this yet but the quadcast s i think is the easiest of the two microphones to set up and use because the main adjustment is essentially changing the gain level on here and a few other tweaks that i showed in the other video it's very straightforward in order to do it's basically plug and play and it's a lot simpler and I found in my tests that this mic eliminates more background noise more easily than the Wave 3. And that requires a lot more tweaking. And I will show what I mean about that in some of the software, but I've also done a video separately on how to eliminate the noise from the Wave 3. So if you've got the Wave 3 or you plan on getting the Wave 3, make sure you check that video out because it goes into a lot of depth on things that you can do to eliminate background noise and counter the problems beyond just getting it on a mic stand. And the thing about that is, is worth bearing in mind is this is just much easier. Plug it in and you're away with recording. In my opinion, it's a lot straight, more straightforward. Whereas the Wave 3 offering is more interesting in other ways. So I'm going to get into that now. So now here I am with the Elgato Wave 3. Again, this is on a mic arm. This is on the blue compass. And again, I've got it fairly close to my mouth and this has the pop filter on it as well. So this is the pop filter. Now the gain is set very low, it's basically a level one and I covered some of this in the other video. But you can see that it's very stealthy looking by comparison. Nowhere near as fancy. Obviously I could theoretically adjust it into a nicer looking position. And you can even go crazy and put it upside down. 
So there are options in what you can do with it. Now this microphone is a lot more flexible. If you're looking to stream and go online live with content, and you haven't planned on having multiple audio sources beyond just talking to your audience. Let's say you want to root in music or game sounds or Discord chat with your friends and other audio sources into it. This has Wavelink software, which is a software that's audio routing, multiple different audio sources, or put down into one output source. That one output source can then be pushed into OBS or Streamlabs or something like that, and then that gives you control over it. It also means that you can individually adjust the levels of each of those and even do other clever things too. So for example, you could have music, let's say you have some copyright few music that you want to play for your audience on stream, but you don't really want to hear it yourself. You can actually set the settings within Wavelink within that software to do just that. So you can set a peaceful level of audio, some nice background music with your stream, for example, that your audience will hear, but then not root it into your headphones so that you don't hear it. Very clever, very intelligent and very streamer friendly. And obviously that is part of this package and it's included with the microphone and it's free. And that's what makes this microphone incredibly appealing if you are that sort of person that's doing that and looking to create a really high quality stream. You don't see that very often with USB microphones, you usually see it with something a bit fancier, like the Shure SM7B behind me and a GoXLR or Razer's audio mixer, which is a lot more expensive with a hardware level you need to preamp an XLR setup. So this mic actually offers features of a much more expensive microphone set up in a much more affordable package. Uh, however, I will note that it does require a lot more tweaking, a lot more setup and a lot more fiddling in order to get correct and running perfectly and perhaps a little bit more expertise. So if you find that you're frustrated with software and you find it really difficult to set up and you hate fiddling and sort of tweaking dials and trying to get everything right, this mic might drive you mad. And I think that's one thing to note. However, it is really powerful because of that, really flexible and really interesting. It's one of the most interesting USB microphones for that reason. However, as I noted already, I found a standard. This thing picks up a lot more background noise, which can be very, very annoying. Again, tweaking that and I've done some settings on how to. I'll link to that in the description. So I want to give you a quick look at what you can do with the software. So download and install the Wavelink software and you'll see it here. So this is the Wavelink software. Now you can essentially set your monitor mix so that you can have your headset monitoring the sound. And then you have a stream output mix. That is the one that you pull into Streamlabs or OBS and you're basically putting that sound source as your main source. What that will then do is take all these other different things and down mix them into one audio source. So for a quick demonstration of that, if I just open up Spotify, you've got Spotify open with Harris Heller's stream beats and you can play that sound. And then what you need to do is you need to go into your Windows system sound settings and make sure you obviously got the mic in selected in here and then go into app mixer for the volume mixers, find Spotify, select the output device as Wavelink Music. And then once you've done that, that's then getting pulled into the stream output. And it's this mix that would then go into OBS. Now what you can do is you can adjust the levels individually, as I already said. So you could, for example, have it really loud for the stream. So this is what your audience hear, but really quiet for yourself. So you're not even hearing it at all. And you can see it coming through on my headset monitor mix. And you can see the levels difference here as well, just how much louder it is for the audience than it is for me. And you can basically adjust that the way you want it to. You might want to go the other way. You might even want to set it so that you're listening to your favorite music in your headphones. So you can set it so it's on that and doing that and then doesn't go through to your audience at all. So it's completely muted to the audience. So your audio level is actually completely different. And that gives you the freedom, obviously, to do something like listen to your favorite music, which isn't copyright free on the stream without worrying about getting a copyright strike. And so that's a bonus. You can obviously also set things like game audio. So you could set up your game audio and you can go into the audio channels. You can have effects. You can use voice chat, which would be something like Discord. And you can pull Discord in. I've gone into a lot more depth separate 
in the other video, including the review on how to do this and what you can do with it. But it's very powerful software that makes it really easy for streamers to set up a variety of audio sources, manage the levels, and have one single output that you can then base to your OBS, which makes life a lot easier because you don't have to worry about multiple audio sources in there and applying filters and other things all managed through this Wavelink software. So really straightforward. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the others linked in the description. Let me know what you think in the comments. And thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.